So this is my BMW K1100 LT. It's a 1996 model, quite old now, 22 years old. Um, beautiful condition, lovely ride, and today it's due for a 10,000 mile service. So before we start, we need to create some access to get to the various engine parts, mainly to get underneath the fuel tank to get to the air filter. Uh, to do that, we start by taking off the side panels. Let's take out the oil filler at the same time. Take the little cover off the compartment. And then if you undo two screws here and here, this panel comes off. You can do the other side as well. You will need to disconnect the, uh, the electrics to the meters. So next uh, we're going to have to drain the oil. So coming underneath the bike, the drain plug is that. And just underneath this uh, cover here with the uh, three Allen screws, that's where the, uh, the uh, oil filter is, is housed. Always asked uh, when I make these videos, uh, what size should the Allen key be or what size Spanish should I use? And the answer is quite simple really, the one that fits. There we go, that's loosened it off. Put the drip tray underneath. Careful when you drop the um, sump plug out that you don't drop it onto the this. I have had one drop down the hole in the past and getting it out is a right blooming game. And here we go, there's the oil. So at this point there's a few things you're going to need. Um, first of all, the oil filter is recessed into the engine so you actually need a like a cup spanner like this in order to uh, get it out. This one's uh, a 2169. Uh, I think it's. A, I think it, you could probably buy these just from any old uh, motor spares place, or talk to your local BMW dealer. You should have also got a bag full of washers and O-rings, and I'm going to pull out a couple here. That should come. There we are. So this one is the old washer from the sump plug. Put on a new one, well worth replacing. And you should also replace the O-ring in the oil filter cover as well. And we just stick a screwdriver in there, pop that out, get the new one and slide it straight in like that like that okay so that's ready to go so let's get the uh, oil filter out pop that in like this if you've always got the right tool it makes life a hell of a lot easier there we go and here she comes there we go One oil filter. Okay. And we pop the new one back in. Just to nip it up, don't have to over tighten these things. Yeah, that's fine. Off comes the cup. Now we're going to put the uh, sump plug back in with its shiny new washer. Right, lastly we're going to put the uh, cover back on. Now there is a right and a wrong way for doing this and it's more a question of lining up the, the fins so that is the right way. There 
house nice and tight. A little bit of a clean up again. Job jobbed. So next we're going to fill up with engine oil and uh, until we see the oil appear in that little window there and we want the oil level to be just at the top of the, uh, the window. Okay before I completely fill it up you can see it's about halfway there now. So this is the oil filler that we, uh, we took out earlier. Uh, going to give it a bit of a wipe. Now, do you remember the bag of uh, O-rings and stuff? Uh, we've got another O-ring here that we can replace. Just going to pop that off. There's the next one in there. Sit that over. And that's one more little wipe. That's now good to go back into the engine. So that's the oil done. The next job is to uh, replace all the spark plugs and we take this cover off here which will reveal all the plugs and uh, you see you get a pair of pliers you grab hold of plug and you give it a yank like that and we're doing two at a time i think there we go like that i'm just going to tuck that one back there so i know it's number two need a special uh, socket, slightly long, because uh, it's kind of well recessed and then I put a socket set on the end of that uh, to be able to undo it. Uh, it comes off quite easily. We just have a quick look at the spark plug and we're looking for it to be a nice dark colour but not if it's over light, if it's quite a light colour then uh, your engine is running weak. If it's very black then your engine is running very rich. You don't want it to look wet either because that means your engine is missing. Anyway, before you put in a new plug you should check the gap and we use just a, a feeler gauge to do that. It should be somewhere between 22 and 28 thou of an inch. And that one's good to go. So I start it off just using my fingers so I don't cross thread. That feels all right. Pop the socket on. just nip it up and there we are that's two of them done we just pop the plugs back on just by giving them a little push that's on fine this is number two that I folded back and we're just going to push that back on as well and that's on as good so we've done the oil and we've done the spark plugs and now it's time to get to the air filter which is tucked in behind this, uh, this box here. They've got these little clips uh, on that just pop out. There's one here, one further in there, and there's one at the front which is really quite difficult to get to uh, and it's a question of feel. we also got to lift up this tank as well and that's fairly easily done actually. Uh, just lift up the, uh, the seat. Take a handful of tank and lift and pop. It's as simple as that. Just pull it back a little bit. There we are, that'll be safe enough. Okay, let's see how successful we are this time. Pop off the clips. Number two is through there and it's gone. Just put my hand through, yep. And we do one at the front. What we gotta do, just lift this up and pull this out and this is usually a bit of a, a faff to be honest but if you wiggle 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 pull the rubber back here she comes there 
There we are. One air filter out. So there's, there's always a direction of flow on these air filters and you'll see it here. It has top and pointing up to this edge here. So this filter needs to go in like that. Let's see if we can do it. There she goes. Get in there. There, we're there. Miracle. And then all we got to do is clip these back down. So the air filter's in now. Um, all we need to do is put back the tank, Just slide it forward, and drop it. In like that and drop the seat cover. At this stage we can um, start putting some of the panelling back because our next job is changing the fuel filter and to get access to it you have to take out the whole assembly here. Fairly easily done. Four screws, don't lose them. Always worth okay so there's your fuel filter note the arrow on the side of the casing as well it shows the direction of flow uh, there's one uh, fixed pipe the other is a flexible pipe so we just got to undo those uh, one of those jubilee clips just to um, pop the fuel filter out There she is. Here's my fuel filter. So we've got to put the uh, new one in in exactly the same direction as the old one, and that is that way round. So let's pop off a pipe. far enough. There it is. Let's let the fuel drain back into the tank. So there's my flow direction. That one goes back on there. that back up mm -hmm. now all I've got to do is swap this pipe over see that fuel is still draining out of this filter that's why I'm keeping it over the tank There we are. Now, quickly removing that and putting it out of the way. Pop the cap off. Pop on the new one. It's 
nice. And then just slip this back in, back on the solid pipe on the inside, like that. I'm just rotating the Jubilee clip so that the screw head is looking upwards, and then just gently screwing it down, tightening it up. Yeah, that's good. Okay, a little bit of fuel on my hands, not much though. Tank was fairly empty, so uh, that's quite important actually when you're going to do this. Now we're gonna just pop this back in, like that. Quite an easy job, this one. Nip up the, the uh, threads. Not going for overly tight. And the final screw just going in. There we are, one fuel filter changed. Little clean up, moving on. So these are a couple of jobs that are quite often forgotten. Both the side stand and the center stand have grease nipples. There's the one there and there's one there and there's another one on the other side. And it's quite important that you actually grease these things up. Otherwise they do wear out in time. So having a grease gun. Give it a good on. Squirt in there. And similarly, that one. And I'm going to go over the other side and do the other side of the centre stand. So I have two washers left in my bag and two areas on the bike that still have oil that need to be changed. The first is the final drive. Uh, this is a shaft driven motorbike. And the other is the gearbox back here. I'm not gonna change the oil in the final drive. Uh, there is a weakness with BMWs that the wheel is only supported on one side by a bearing in the final drive. And uh, the weakness is that they tend to knock out the bearings. And I lost uh, the bearings in, in the back here uh, less than 2,000 miles ago. So this back end has been rebuilt and it's had fresh oil put into it. If you had to do it though, it's very simple. There's a filler plug just here and a sump plug underneath. Drain out the oil, put the sump plug back in and fill up the oil so it just reaches the top threads uh, of the filler hole. And that's it done. What you need to use though is gearbox oil, which is EP8090 in both the, the final drive and the, and the gearbox. One of the problems we've got though is when we come to do the gearbox, knowing how much oil to put into this. And in the manual, you'll see that it has a drawing of a C-spanner. Now this spanner should have come with the BMW toolkit and is used to adjust the suspension. I don't have that tool, uh, but what it does tell me is that the depth of oil should be uh, a maximum of 116 millimeters from the top of the filler plug uh, to a minimum of 126 millimeters. So what I've done is taken a long screwdriver, wrapped a piece of insulation tape on it at the appropriate distance, and I'm gonna use that as a dip. So I've used a standard Allen key here with a box spanner just to uh, make life a little bit easier. And I've also taken the side panel off the bike for better access. Um, I'm using a biscuit tin here because the, uh, the drain is actually quite close to the center stand. So that's it, 10,000 mile service done.